What is up everyone? My name would be Josh. This is Strain Central and today we are going to be doing a strain review on this Blackberry Kim OG. So technically I actually can't find out like the true genetics for this strain. So I will kind of speculate on what I think they are and how I think they kind of came to be. But all I really know like for sure about this strain is the fact that it's a Fireline strain. So Fireline is actually an I-502 cannabis producer in the state of Washington and honestly they don't have a very big like internet presence. So they do have some of the social medias like I think they have Instagram and they might have a Facebook. But I think their Facebook is like 100 likes and same with their Instagram. So realistically these guys are simply just growing some really good weed. They don't really show it off online or anything so I guess that's where I come into play and actually am going to like show off this strain uh, but I did actually reach out to Fireline to see if I could get any like inside scoop on the genetics and unfortunately didn't hear back from them so maybe at some point you will see like down in the description like I'll update it if they do ever get back to me but unfortunately it's been like a couple weeks I tried email I tried Instagram and I've heard nothing but here is my overall like speculation as to what I do think this strain is so like the name Blackberry Kim OG suggests, I'm going to assume that it's a tri-cross. So this is not to be confused with the strain Blackberry Kim Dog, which is like a just a nice cerebral, somewhat euphoric um, sativa hybrid. So Blackberry Kim OG, which like I said is mostly a Fireline strain, is an indica. So I don't know if this is just like some kind of random Blackberry Kim Dog pheno that ended like being an indica pheno, so they kind of renamed it. But it's weird because the whole OG thing is kind of odd when you have Kim Dog in the name. Kim Dog itself is actually technically speculated to be an OG Kush Hindu Kush cross or a Hindu land race cross. So by having OG in the name, it's like you're recognizing this is like a double OG cross. But Blackberry is actually a cross between Black Domina and Raspberry Croft. So that's like a heavy indica cross with a heavy sativa, and then they're crossing that with a Kim Dog, which is a hybrid. So the overall effects you are going to be feeling from this like overall Blackberry Kim OG, very couch locky, very sedating, and after a couple bowls, it will definitely put you to bed. So this is an indica dominant hybrid. There is still some very subtle euphoric uh, kind of cerebral effects. And I don't know if this is, like I said, a triple cross, and that third cross might just be like some kind of random Afghani land race. The only reason I say that is because it gives you that sedating effect, and then it also has like a really nice hashy taste to it as well. So, I don't know. I'm just throwing some randomness out there. That's kind of what I assume. It's probably some kind of a blackberry crossed with a Kim Dog crossed with maybe an OG, like a, a Afghani land race strain. I don't know exactly what it is, but we do have some awesome close-ups of this, so I definitely hope you guys enjoy. So let's actually just go ahead and jump into smoking, guys. So today I'm gonna to be using this uh, little kilo spoon. This is actually a 420 science piece, and I guess technically I could announce this now. So at the beginning of August, I will be going with a gigantic group of people. The 420 science crew, Sasha, Slower, or Silent Hippie, Slower, uh, Ty High Guy, I believe there's two people from the like local uh, Las Vegas dispensary scene also going to be going. So it's just like a gigantic crew of people and we're all going to be going out to Denver for I think like a week's time to do like a Tricome Institute course. So hopefully we're just going to learn some like really valuable information about cannabis and the content's going to be insane. So be ready for that. That is coming like I said probably like the beginning of August. So that's like a little hype little hype beast portion but cheers guys i definitely hope you guys are smoking along dabbing along vaping along getting those cannabinoids nice and deep into your lungs because these are going to be deep into mine so kilo spoon this thing has like the sickest little marble on it and technically 
I'm like all matching today. I've got like the weird Mai Tai matching collection with the bubbler that was actually sent in by a viewer, the little kilo spoon, and then the sick little uh, Cetus glass pendy. But cheers, guys. It's, it's already a rambly day and I haven't even started smoking. So let's get it. Rip one more time. So I mean, spoons and J's are gonna be something that give you really, really true, very like accurate flavor. Um, I, not not more than like a clean water piece, but I'm actually really starting to like spoon pipes and joints a lot more because you do get a different taste. So like the, the flavors that I got off of that were kind of musky, slightly hashy, actually really hashy. Hashi is actually probably the over-dominating force of this all. And then there's like a really nice kind of fruity, almost like berry kind of taste to it. So I definitely understand where that blackberry aspect comes into things. But if I had to put like three or four flavors on this, I'd say hash, cedar, almost like a woody kind of flavor, and then like a musky berries. So I understand that like blackberry OG because there's that musky berry. But there's a really weird, like, woody, almost hashy kind of influence, and I really don't taste much of, like, the normal diesel-y fueliness, so quite odd. But really quickly, let's get a quick smell test on, like, the overall strain itself. So, usually this is something I do prior to actually smoking. But this is so weird. So, smell-wise, it's, it's a very fake fruit smell. It's, like, fake fruit, hash... And then like ammonia and that's such a weird smell using like the term ammonia but it's it's like a mix between like an ammonia which is like stuff that's found in cleaner and wintergreen so it's like a fake fruity slightly hashy ammonia wintergreen which is the weirdest smell i think i've ever actually broken down on the show yet so effects that have onset from that first little bowl and the small portion i smoked prior to this are just very relaxing. So like my body's calm, my mind really isn't that sedated. I do have like a very slight cerebral just kind of effect, but it's not racy and it's really not spacey either. So I, I kind of do feel that slight effect behind my eyes, but it's nothing that's like really intense. So this would probably be a really, really, really good strain for pain relief and probably also muscle spasms, simply because I feel like my body is just very calm. I think one of the main things that actually is causing that like overall effect and like the body calm effect is the fact that this strain normally tests pretty high for myrcene. So all the samples I found were testing anywhere from like 0.8 to like 2% myrcene. Myrcene is actually a terpene and most people think terpene is simply only flavor. But the cool thing is with like the synergistical effects of cannabis is terpenes can actually give you different feelings, different effects. So, myrcene itself is found in a lot of fruits. It's an anti-inflammatory, anti-emetic, anti just about everything. So, you're gonna definitely feel the psychoactive effects a little bit stronger when you do have strains that are high in myrcene. So, you are gonna get that really nice kind of body calm that's really good for pain and, and muscle spasms. But at the same time, there is this nice little kind of psychoactive boost from that little myrcene. So, it's slightly little, like, like I said, slightly cerebral, but mostly good for pain, honestly. I would definitely also have to say this is probably a pretty good strain for like beginner smokers and insomnia. So it does definitely have just like the slight kind of tired effects that I would say heavy indicas do give you. Uh, I would say most experienced smokers could kind of smoke right through that and just kind of enjoy it as like a heavy indica. But for those that are kind of just getting into cannabis and or have low cannabis tolerances, I could definitely see this being a pretty decent insomnia strain in high doses. So what would this be good for? Like what times a day would this be good to use? I'd say personally this is a strain mostly geared for evening use. So anytime at night where you can kind of just lock into the couch, maybe watch some good TV or watch like a good Netflix show or something, that's what this strain is going to be great for. And also people that want pain relief. So I wouldn't really call it functional pain relief. It definitely is that like end of the day pain relief where you can just be at ease with everything and lock back into the couch. So don't smoke this before you're going to work because you're probably going to be kind of like, like zombified. 
Uh, I could actually also see this strain most of the time testing relatively high for CBD with just like the overall effects that I am feeling because I'm very at peace and it really does feel like I just took a nice dose of like CBD. So bedtime usage really anytime at night and probably also decent for like post-workout uh, like pain, muscle pain and stuff. So muscle soreness, great strain for that. But I'm gonna have to say the overall rating I do give this strain is a super, super solid 5.4 out of 7. So here's why I gave it the exact number that I did and how it kind of works out to be that. And then here's where it stands on the overall strain central scale. So I definitely hope you guys enjoyed this quick little episode of the Blackberry Kim. I, like I said, hope that at some point I can get like a true verification on genetics and Hopefully I was somewhat right. I guess if I'm not, I'll have to redo this at some point. But nonetheless, I definitely hope all you guys are having yourself an awesome, awesome, awesome day at home. And I hope you guys are just keeping that head up. If you guys are going through something that's that's just trying to really get you down, trying to suck all your positive energy out, please make sure to remember this. You actively have two choices in most situations, and that's anger or depression and getting down on yourself and overcoming. And a lot of the time, getting down on yourself, getting depressed, just kind of like, fuck, fuck the world, why did this happen to me, woe is me, it's this weird attitude that never really actually helps the situation. So approach everything with positivity and try to keep that head up to the best of your ability. But Cheers, my friends. Let's get this last rip out of the bubbler and uh, call it an episode. But I'm kind of still rambly, so also maybe a decent ramble strain, but cheers. This has no water in it, by the way. <coughs> Just dry ripped the bubbler. Well, stay positive, stay medicated. Peace, guys.